So it finally happened, and we're going to talk about it coming up. Once you get your driver's license, sooner or later, you're going to get a flat tire. So a couple years ago, I made a video explaining the different options and things you should do if you get a flat tire. But it really depends on the scenario that you're in and which option will work best for you. So again, I got a flat tire recently. But looking back, it really wasn't that big a deal for me and it wasn't really that much of a hassle. But it's probably because I knew what to do. So the story goes, it's a normal work day and I'm driving my daughter to my parents' house for daycare. And a few minutes into that drive, I notice that the tire pressure light goes on and I swipe over to look at the PSI on the tires and one of them is at 30 PSI. So the normal PSI for the Performance Model Y is 42 and I had just put a little bit of air in the tires to pump them back up to 42 a couple of days before. So I knew there was an issue and when I, as I kept driving a couple minutes, like every minute basically, it would go down 1 PSI, 29, 28. So I knew I had an issue. So because the PSI was dropping so fast, I knew I didn't have a slow leak, but I had basically a hole in the tire. So I barely made it over my parents' house, and by that, by that time, the tire was basically totally flat. So once I get my daughter into the house and I take a look at the tire, well, what do you know? There's a big old piece of metal sticking out of it, and there's a little bit of air coming out that you can hear, uh, you know, the remaining air basically from the tire. So now, how do I deal with this as I have a flat tire and I have a car that basically can't go anywhere? So the key point for me is having a portable air pump. So that is the lifesaver here. So basically I pulled that out and started pumping the tire. So obviously you can use the air pump in multiple situations like I did a couple days before where I just needed to pump up the tires. Or if I have an issue like this where I basically need to put emergency air into it, I can do that as well. And it's just more convenient to do that because if I didn't have it, how am I even going to get to the gas station to get air in the tire? I can't. I'd have to get it towed somewhere. So it's just nice to have the air pump and not have to go to the gas station and on top of that deal with the attendant because some gas stations actually charge for air when it's actually legally supposed to be free, but they do it anyways. So I have to deal with all of that. Just do it in the driveway. So I highly recommend carrying a portable air pump with you because even if you need a tow truck, you have no, how, no idea how long it's going to take for the tow truck to get there. So that just makes this whole process a lot longer, having to wait for the tow truck rather than just taking care of it yourself immediately. The pump I have isn't sold anymore on Amazon, but I'll link you to another one I've looked at that's pretty good in case you want to get one to have with your car and for your family. So because the piece of metal was so big and you could actually hear air coming out of the tire, uh, it was really more a race against time for me. So what I did is I pumped up the tire as fast as I could and it would only get to about 20 PSI because the hole was, you know, big enough where the, it counteracted the actual pressure coming in from the air compressor. And then what I did is I drove down the street as fast as I could. The tire shop was only two miles away, but I ended up having to stop at a gas station about halfway to fill up the tire again because it was so flat in order to make it to the tire shop because I don't want to risk damaging the rim and driving on a flat tire, you know, and that's what's going to damage the rim. Once I got to the tire shop, it was pretty simple from there. It was just wait for them to give me an update and see if they could patch it. So in my head, I was 50-50 if they could patch it or not because it was because the piece of metal was so close to the sidewall. Well, about 30 minutes later, I got that call from the tire shop and they said that the piece of metal was so big that it wasn't safe to patch it, so I'd need a new tire. This is what was stuck in the tire. Where does something like that even come from? It's such a big piece of metal. It almost looks like a mini knife, and it was a good two inches in length. So, $575 later, I'm on my way with a brand new tire. Yes, performance cars are not cheap. I just had the tire changed with the same OEM Pirelli P0. The tire itself costs $500, and you have taxes and installation. You get the picture. Also, shout out to America's Tire. That's where I've been taking my cars to get new tires and tire maintenance done for a really long time. And they have great customer service, and the experience this time was, again, very good. It's funny I mentioned this, too, because when I was waiting in line to pick up the car, there was a guy in front of me who was waiting to pick up his car as well. And once they serviced him, they told him, hey, uh, you know, we had your, there's a nail in your car and we're doing it for free just because that's what we do. That's part of our customer service. And the guy basically said, now that's how customer service should be. So this is another example of how America's Tires does a really great job and they are very customer service focused. 
On top of that, I didn't have an appointment because it was sort of an emergency. You know, you can't control when you run over nails and pieces of metal and things. So I called them and they told me that they had a full day worth of installs to do, but to bring the car in anyways, and they would fit me in there to get it done um, because they try to make nails and flat tires a priority since it is out of your control. And even with their full day of installs, it only took them about an hour from start to finish, which is really impressive. Even if I had to leave the car there all day to get the tire fixed, I'd totally be okay with that because I didn't have an appointment and, you know, they're busy like everybody else and they even told me they were busy, but they only took an hour, which again is very impressive. So like the other guy said, this is how customer service should be. So I do appreciate America's Tires putting in the effort to get me in and out quick. Do you guys have any crazy flat tire stories? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.